Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. Today I'm going to shoot a video on a gun I just picked up and I've been wanting to pick one of these up for quite a while. Very recognizable silhouette. It is a Chris Vector in 45 ACP. Um, whether it is a applicable gun or not, it's a very, very recognizable one and that's kind of the ones I'm after. I really like collecting them just because when people come over to my house, I show them around. They always like the Call of Duty guns and I can't blame them because so do I. Anyway, the Chris Vector. I've shot one years ago. It was a buddy's. And it was the one with like a barrel shroud that looked like a mock suppressor just to give it the full length of a rifle. Um, and it was cool. It was also in 45 ACP, but I always wanted to shoot a suppressed one. So first off, I haven't even shot this one particularly yet. You guys are going to see my first impressions. We're going to shoot it unsuppressed first. But if you guys were wondering what is in my pocket, it is in fact a rugged obsidian 45 with the full baffle stack. And I got the right piston on there for this thread pitch. I already forgot what it is. Let me read it off here. 16 by one LH, we're left hand. So it was reverse threaded, I didn't know that. So I had to go get the piston, got it. Uh, and so we should be all squared away. And I got the fixed barrel spacer on there as well. But we're gonna get to know it unsuppressed first. And you guys better be sure I'm not gonna thread the suppressor on the gun on this video, because I wanna stay kosher with the rules of YouTube. Some of you guys may know what I'm referring to. Anyway, so we're gonna be all good today. Um, so cool, the Chris Vector, I bought this like two months ago, maybe a month and a half ago, and I still haven't shot it, so I'm eager. Um, it's cool, it's got this cool Cerakote to it, uh, bought it like that, so I don't know if that was done by Chris Vector or the distributor, because I got it on Gunbroker, so I have no idea. But yeah, I did get mine in 45 ACP, because I knew I wanted to try it suppressed. And in case you guys are new around here, you may not know that I really liked 45 ACP suppressed because the round itself is already fat and slow and sluggish, so it doesn't break the sound barrier. So when you suppress that, you're really not left with all that much sound. The sound of the wind's probably gonna be louder than the gunshot today. Um, so yeah, another windy one here. I apologize for that. Let's just go ahead and get shooting. Like I said, start off unsuppressed. Very, very interesting gun. Um, as you can tell, it's not so much a full review on it. I'm not going into the nitty gritty details, but most of you guys already know this detail. And in case not, I'll show you. When the gun reciprocates, this is a semi-auto version, of course, but it was, it was made to be the machine gun. It's supposed to be recoilless for the most part, or at least have a lack of muzzle rise because the bolt itself doesn't go straight back, but actually vectors down here. So that's what this gap is for. So instead of having muzzle rise, it just kind of shakes violently, I guess, if it's a machine gun version, but this is not. Enough talking. Uh, I don't even know if this is sighted in, so let's put it on a big piece of steel. That is very interesting. Yeah, okay, even though I've shot one years ago, it's a different impression. It's less snappy than I remember. It's actually really nice. Yeah, I'm just seeing the reticle shake, but it kind of just stays there. Wow, very cool. All right, I'm slightly low. I might adjust that just a little bit. Load up some more. To be honest, I think I'm done shooting it unsuppressed. Ta-da, and just like that, the suppressor mounted itself. I'm gonna have hearing protection on initially, and uh, we'll see if I can rip them off and not need them. That's interesting, when I release the bolt, I'm used to guns kind of jolting forward, but this one just doesn't really move at all. It's very interesting, this whole system. Let's go back to the steel. Go put it in the dirt just to understand the sound real quick. I'll risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, that's fine. It's not uber, uber quiet, but it's pretty good. There's a decent amount of blast kind of pop coming from the port, but if I shoot quickly, there might be some ringing in the ear. Not too bad. The steel is about the same decibel, if not, it's more. All right, cool. With that said, I have some targets that don't make so much noise, so let's just shoot those. Again, just pay attention to how little the gun moves when I release the bolt. Kind of cool. All right, I've got some expired drinks here. Thanks to my neighbor for giving me these. He knows I like fun targets. Ooh, it smells fruity. Very nice. I said it wasn't gonna be like a review and it's not, but just because it's such an interesting gun and some of you guys may not be familiar with it, I thought I'd kind of walk you through the manual of arms real quickly. Um, okay, 
So magazine goes here, like I said, this whole block is where the bolt system kind of vectors in. Again, more reasonable or uh, whatever for like the machine gun version. That would be a lot of fun to shoot, but the semi-auto one's kind of cool just to scratch the itch a little bit. Um, had a Picatinny rail here. I put an angled grip on there, makes it a little bit more comfortable. Charging handles here, folds off to the side. Um, and you could just bring it back, which it's already locked back. So uh, to let that go forward, it's gonna be this paddle right here, like that. Um, what's interesting is now that the bolt's closed, but it still looks open. So the height over bore is a huge deal here. So I got the center of my tube of the optic here, but that bullet gets fed way down here. So that is a huge height difference. So I'm shooting kind of low right now. Uh, just something to know. But again, that's kind of why you buy one of these. It's just the weird system, the weird look that becomes of that system. Uh, so yeah, now I'll go ahead and take that charger handle. Boom, lock it back. Mag release is right here. It takes Glock mags, in case you guys didn't know that. Uh, fire selectors ambidextrous right here. Red is dead, white safe. Um, what else? Um, stock or brace can be folded off in this particular example, not all of them. Still a little low. Getting a little bit better with it. It's cool, man. Um, again, this one's in 45 ACP. I know they do 10 mil and 9 mil as well, but um, it's kind of like the 1911 in the sense that I just associate this thing to being a 45 ACP, but knowing there's other calibers out there, that's just how I've known the Chris Vector to be, but the expansion of calibers is kind of cool to see as well. For what it's worth, before anyone calls me a shill, I bought this thing um, just to add to the collection. I reached out to Chris, they never got back to me. Boo -hoo. Anyway, but it's cool, I like it. Again, it's not even so practical. It's just more so just the collectability of just a recognizable silhouette. Um, I certainly recognize it. Played a role in my childhood, playing some Modern Warfare, of course. And some of you guys scoff when I make remarks to video games and in real life guns, but it's just cool. So if you don't like it, suck it up. Uh, cool gun. I don't know how practical it is. I would argue not very, but just a fun thing to bring out. Suppress a 45 version and it's pretty fun. There we go. Anyway, short look at it. Didn't really have a whole itinerary to go through here. Again, not so much a full review, but I don't know. I bought it. I knew I was going to bring it out here, and I thought I'd just bring the camera along because I haven't seen a whole lot of videos out there with uh, suppressed versions of the 45 ACP Chris Vector. So I thought I'd showcase it. It's very cool. I like it. Hasn't gunked up yet after the few rounds we put through it, so that's nice. But anyway, that does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. Take care.